Hope you're doing good today. I am moving my sitting area um, in my living room. I hope winter is gone and I hope it's warming up. It's pretty cold today. And so, but I'm hoping it's going to get warmer soon. Today I'm making one more video for this week. And who knows, this may be it for the next three weeks. Because I'm going on vacation. If I have time, I'll make one more before I leave. But I'm not sure if I have the time. I'll be gone for three weeks, so you'll probably not get any videos. And got plenty of videos that you can watch. If you are on BitChute or Rumble, you uh, can go on YouTube. Got plenty on YouTube. BitChute has quite a lot. I've been on BitChute for a while now. On YouTube, I have playlists for different topics, so that makes things a little easier. But people, my videos are mainly, if you've been following me, about end times. Watching the signs that point to the return of Christ. All requirements are fulfilled for the Lord's return. Many are confused if they are stuck in dispensationalism or even in those rapture deniers. I'm not going to name them. They're confused about many end times topics like for instance antichrist if you're confused still about who antichrist is please look at my playlist antichrist i go in clear detail i go um do some really biblical studies and show you clearly using daniel using of course um paul and revelation who this man of sin is it's not antichrist antichrist is everybody according to first john 2 everybody who denies jesus coming in the flesh in other words jesus coming as god in the flesh i know i have had conversations with people about that and there's still people that don't believe that Jesus is actually God in the flesh or the Holy Spirit is actually God in the flesh and I understand that even there we have uh, misunderstandings because we can't understand God anyways but at least we're going to have to see what the Bible says about things and of course, it's not just what the Bible says, but what the Holy Spirit teaches us. Jesus told us before he was crucified, after the, or during the Last Supper. And in my last video, I said that he was preparing a place for us. That's the first thing he said. And the second thing he said is that he is sending the Holy Spirit who would teach us everything make no mistakes we have a lot of theologians or that people that call themselves theologians that have absolutely no holy spirit and all they do is they understand or try to understand the bible through academic knowledge in other words they may do research which is good about history how this section of the Bible fits in within history. This is all good. 
They may learn about the original culture, which is all good, but that's not enough. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you misinterpret the Bible, or you, you may misinterpret the Bible. A lot of people do that. They misinterpret the Bible. Why? Because they come across something that doesn't make or they don't understand, and then they assume. That's what interpretation is. It's an assumption. And here, of course, is my cat again, because she needs to be part of the whole story. Right? Yeah. See? That's what she said. So there is no doubt, people, we need the Holy Spirit. If you don't have it, people are going to ask, well, what are you going to do? Because the regular traditional churches really don't teach you. They think, oh, it's an automatic. It's an automatic that you receive the Holy Spirit, but no, it's not really an automatic. It's not an automatic that when you say, yeah, I accept Jesus as my Savior, that you will actually have the Holy Spirit and that you're connected. You have to actually follow Jesus. And I've been preaching that as well. Not just end times theology, but specifically how am I going to be in the rapture? How can I avoid having to go through the wrath of God? This extinction event that I talked about in my last video. People, it is going to be an extinction event. Extinction event does not mean all humankind will be uh, gone or all animals will be gone. But extinction event means that there are lots of animals could be dead and lots of people could be dead and the earth has to rejuvenate again. We have maybe a handful of people left afterwards. That's what we're going through during this wrath of God. And people are not aware of it. You know, it's just like whitewashed. Oh, it's just tribulation. People, it is a, a destruction. It is a destruction. And yeah, the earth is going to survive through it, just like it survived through the flood or any other catastrophic event that happened before the flood. The earth survived it. But life as it was before the catastrophe has changed drastically. And this is what's going to happen with the next event. And we have to be prepared. We have to know that no, we do not want to go through this wrath of God. And matter of fact, my whole goal is to live for the Lord anyways. What I'm looking forward to is what comes out of this cleansing of the earth. The earth is going to be cleansed. The earth is going to be reset. Yeah, we hear so much about reset. People, this reset that they are talking about is going to be an extinction level reset. They know it's coming. People, it's the elite. They know the, cata uh, the, the catastrophic events are coming. They know it's going to be a reset, but Satan is telling them, that they're going to be again afterwards on top. And so they're preparing their own bunkers. People, I hope you read Revelation 6, 12 through 17. That's where we hear about the elite building their bunkers. We know it. We know that they're building their bunkers. They know that the catastrophic events are happening. That's why what is happening politically in this world today is happening. Because Satan knows 
the catastrophic event is happening and he is preparing. Why? Because he's thinking he still can come out on top or at least he's going to plan to really uh, make sure humanity is being destroyed. He's been planning for this for years. Yes, he wants absolute control, world control until the end. So he can control humankind and very few people will make it into the rapture. Or even then be sealed. If you're still not familiar with those people that are sealed and have to go through the wrath of God and those that are being taken out, which is the saints, then watch some of my videos or ask me questions. We need to be prepared. And again, Jesus said in, I would think it's probably John 15 or start with John 14. In my last video, I read John 14. And if you probably continue, you will get to the one where he says, he will send you he will send the holy spirit who will guide you in everything he is our teacher i can give you hints i can tell you okay look at this hey there's something wrong here okay i can do that i can say look at um daniel 9 these 70 weeks of daniel are over I can help you, help you understand who the 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 um the anointed one for instance is. And really we have to look at it also with a what? So we get the English language correct because a lot of people will mislead you and misinterpret things purposely using the English language when you are not aware of the English language. So we have to be careful. And sometimes we do need people that point us in the right direction but don't ever follow anybody. Never ever take some maybe advice and then you check it out. You always check things out in the Bible. And one verse alone is never going to tell you what the truth is. The Holy Spirit always works with two or more witnesses. So if you find it in one place in the Old Testament, you will find it in the in the New Testament, and the New Testament may explain more about the Old Testament. And you have to do the research. You have to pick and, and find the puzzle pieces and then see how they fit together. And don't squeeze them together. Some people, they squeeze these puzzle pieces into each other and they don't even belong there. If you have been working on a puzzle, you know that you don't squeeze these puzzle pieces in wherever you want. You have to find clues and think, okay, this fits here, this fits there, and it has to fit exactly in there. That's how it is with the Bible. God not, never gives us everything in one spot. Simply because he wants us to depend on the Holy Spirit's guidance. Very, very simple. So the Holy Spirit is the most important thing. And how do we get the Holy Spirit? By following Jesus. Jesus constantly tells us that we have to follow him. Leave everything and follow him. Now, yes, we need things. If we have a family, we need, or we even ourselves need a place to live. Well, we actually don't need to, but it'd be good to have one. I'm not saying to sell 
all your possessions and then you don't have a place to live and you have to live you know as a homeless person i don't advise you to do that um but when the bible or when jesus says to leave things it just simply means don't be tied down to worldly possessions we use worldly possessions to live to exist to do our missionary work our ministry work but we stick with basic things basic possessions and I know that's hard for some people. Jesus also said it's harder for a rich person. Um, what is it? How does he say it? You probably know it yourself. You can look it up. It is harder for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God than a camel going through a, the ear of a needle. I think that's what he said. Put it in the comment when you find it. Let me know what that verse exactly says. Because that's what he says. It's hard, harder for a rich person to go into the kingdom. Why? Because riches sometimes deceives us and misleads us. It doesn't have to, but many times it does. The love of money, right? It's the root of all evil. The love of money. Not that money is. We can do a lot of good things with money. But the love of money. If you focus your life on acquiring more and more and more, that is not a very healthy way of following Jesus. Because Jesus is the only person that wants to be followed. And if we don't only follow him, we cannot be connected to God. If we go our own way, our own goals, which most traditional or what so-called Christians do, we cannot be connected to Jesus and we will not have the Holy Spirit. And this is what we need to be focusing on. Because the end could be this year. And I'm talking about the end or the beginning of the day of the Lord is when Jesus returns. The end of humankind, the end of the time of the Gentiles can be this year. Because all things have been fulfilled, at least the things that are written in the Bible. The man of sin is here. That's what First Thessalonians 2 is saying, right? The man of sin is here. The falling away. Somebody was talking about the falling away and, oh, it's going to get worse. No, it's not getting worse. We're almost at the end. It can't get worse. The falling away is here. People fell away. There's hardly anybody left, people. Look at my videos. See how many people watch my videos. And I don't want to, <coughs> you know, um, brag or anything. But... Look at my videos. How many people are searching for the truth? We don't have very many people left that are going to be in the rapture. Most people are deceived. Most so-called Christians. The churches are full of so-called Christians. I just say, oh yeah, do this Christianese battle. But they're not really following Jesus. And this is what my videos are about. 
connecting to the Holy or being connected to the Holy Spirit. Remember the ten virgins in Matthew 25. Only five were picked up by Jesus. That is the rapture. Matthew 25. That's the rapture. And the people that are going to be standing in front of the door, the foolish virgins, they will have to go through the wrath of God. Through the devastation, through the mark of the beast. People, the mark of the beast is again also at the door. The collapse of not only our society, but the collapse of our financial system, the collapse of the dollar is in front of the door. The experts are telling us daily. And then what is coming? CBDC, which is um, central Central di uh, banking digital currency. That's what is coming. Digital currency. Where the government can now even control you more. He's already controlling us. Everything is already mainly digital people. I think they're just fooling us. But what they're going to do is they're going to crash our system so they can start all over. But I don't believe that crashing is not going to happen until really the, hap the, the rapture is happening. I think Satan knows exactly what's coming. The elite know that something is coming. That's why they're talking about the reset. That's why they're talking about the crash of our financial system. That's why people are saying that our civilization is crashing we see clearly what's happening today with the Iran Iranian president being killed in this helicopter accident, which may have been caused by somebody. Could have been an assassination. I don't know. I'm not going to say it. We will find out. But it could be. It definitely does not help relations. Because, you know, Iran is part of the Russian-China axis, the BRICS countries. They are going to bring down the empire. I'm going to use the word empire. Because that's what they use. Because they they know that the U.S. has empirical, I don't say tendencies, they actually do it. They act like an empire. An empire wants world dominion. That's what an empire wants. An empire does not want other people or other countries to exist. Okay, please make no mistake. And I know U.S. people, Americans, are slumbering. They're slumbering. They're not understanding that the United States is an empire. And I know an empire is what an empire does. He has empirical traits. Empirical traits means they want to take over the world. And what the U.S. is doing, they are, they are telling everybody that they're bringing democracy into this world, which they don't. They only bring wars and destruction. They have never, ever brought peace to any country that they attacked. Never. Look at Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, Libya. Well, let's look at Egypt even. 
They don't bring peace. Unless they are saying, "Oh, democracy is,、uh, um, you know, it's not、uh, in connection with peace." But they are assuming people assuming a democracy brings peace, right? Peace and freedom for people. That's not what they're bringing into this world, and that's why we have on the other side still people that resist. This take over by this empirical America. They're resisting it. They're trying to resist it, and it's very hard because they're constantly trying to disrupt other people's governments. That is not the governments that are not in the interest or are not working with in the interest of the United States. They're always looked upon as dictators, and then you have to fight them. And these people don't want anything. They just want to have a peaceful life too. But I'm going pretty deep into politics. But people, this is a sign that we are at the end. It's a sign that we are at the end. The Third World War is coming. We cannot prevent it. It's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time, people. Eventually, Russia, China, and of course Iran is in that axis as well. They're going to have enough. They know once it starts, it may end up in a total destruction. You add the destruction of a civilization, the destruction of a financial system, the destruction of a whole political, the whole political system of this world. Absolute upheaval, and then you add the catastrophic events to it. That will happen naturally, and this is what's going to happen here soon. It's like a a, a barrel of of、uh, um, explosives. That's what it is, a barrel of explosives. Somebody just has to put a little spark to it, and it's going to be going up, up in flames. And that's where we are. Today, and because it becomes more tense and more tense, we know that God is not going to allow for this world to be totally destroyed by humankind. Just like He didn't allow it during、um, during Moses、uh, Noah's time. During Noah's time, it was very close that humankind would have been destroyed because of. DNA or genetic modification, and this is what we are having today again. How close are we that humankind is contaminated? That the genes of humankind are contaminated. I don't know. Can we even say something like that on, you know, on YouTube again? But that's what we are having today. We're learning it. Yeah, I've seen it on YouTube too. The information is on YouTube. What all these different medica medications are doing? Gene therapy, all right. When we couldn't say it before, what is gene therapy? Well, gene therapy meddles with the genes. In what way? I don't know. It doesn't matter. They're meddling with it, and we know it. We couldn't say that before, but it's happening now. Because now they're coming out and saying it. The system is going down, and it's going down fast. We cannot even trust the medical system anymore. 
At least I don't. Maybe somebody else can. <laughs> but we're coming close. People, I have done so many videos. Bible studies. I show you clearly that we're coming to the second coming of Jesus and to the rapture. If you still want to deny it, that is your problem. I'm not taking responsibility for those people that want to deny things. Do not follow them. That's all I can say. There's, I, I have comments once in a while where people just, you know, okay, they can, they can believe what they want. They can believe what they want. Doesn't make it right. Doesn't make it right. People that deny the rapture, people that deny the wrath of God. Well, actually, they don't just even talk about the wrath of God because they have no idea. Oh, sure, you have to go through the, the, the tribulation. Unbelievable. At the end, I just want to read Second Thessalonians 1. People that usually read Second Thessalonians 2, right? And the Antichrist or the man of sin and the day of the Lord. Let me read what Paul wrote in Second Thessalonians 1. I'm going to start with verse 5. All this is evident, evidence that God's judgment is right. And as a result, you will be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which you are suffering. Who is he talking to? You mean the people after uh, the rapture? Or who? He is talking to the Thessalonians during Paul's time. They're already suffering. God is just. He will pay back trouble to those who trouble you and give relief to you who are troubled. Now here he is using trouble. But here really, if you, some translations say tribulation. And to us as well, this is, this will happen when the Lord Jesus reveals, is revealed from heaven in blazing fire with the powerful, with his powerful angels. He will punish those who do not know God and do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. They will be punished with everlasting destruction and shut out from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might. On the day he comes to be glorified in his holy people and to be marveled at among all those who have believed. This includes you because you believed our testimony because you believed our testimony to you. Who is it talking to? The people after the rapture? No, the people before. Let's go to the new King James translation, if I find it really fast. I'm trying to find it, but uh, there it is. And see what he says. All right, here it actually uses the word tribulation in the New King James. So that we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecution and tribulation that you endure. Which is manifest 
evidence of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which you all for which you all so suffer. He's talking to the people then. They are suffering. They go through tribulation. And everybody, every true believer, since Jesus' time, has gone through tribulation and suffering. And again, I say it and over and over again, if you are not suffering for the Lord, you may not even be a true follower. Bottom line. Bottom line. I'm coming to an end. I want to come to a close. People, make sure you are prepared. Make sure you have the Holy Spirit. Doesn't mean you have to speak in tongues or go wild or whatever. It just simply means you have to be connected to the Lord. You have to follow him. That's what it means to have the Holy Spirit. You follow him. And when you follow the Lord, he will enlighten you more and more. He will ha open, the Holy Spirit will open your eyes more and more to the truth. Not only spiritual truth, but also truth that's going on in the world. It will open your eyes to what the world is all about. Open your eyes so that you can actually walk better in the footsteps of Jesus. And therefore, I always say, let the Holy Spirit guide you in everything. 